Check out this unofficial Twitter poll, but it really says it all. 90 to 10 today, all of you are a lot more focused on when things open up, getting your hair fixed rather than your nails. Yeah, you want bye-bye shaggy and bye-bye gray. And that meant that hair salons, barber shops that are located outside of Marion Lake and Cass Counties today were very busy. They are reopening this week and they are taking customers by appointment only per state guidelines. Now, I talked with a salon owner who happens to be in Boone County today and she said that during COVID-19, she also got, was pretty busy because she became a voice for her entire industry across the state you know we're booked I'm booked for probably six weeks out right now I don't I don't have an opening Kimberly Hubbard owns Kimberly's hair design it's on Main Street in Zionsville and right now she's scheduling 12-hour days and expect she'll get to all her clients by late June I'm planning on doing um, Monday through Saturday so I'm going to take one day off a week, and I'm going to do that for at least four weeks. During the COVID-19 shutdown, Hubbard became a local expert on the state cosmetology guidelines. We can only have one person at a time in the salon per stylist, and we have to be six feet apart. They paid us on that amount. She shared what she's learned virtually through a newly created Indiana Stylist United private Facebook group. It now has 4,200 members. It grew very quickly within like two weeks. So it told me there was a lot of people out there hurting, scared, and just looking for that place to go to for support. She also found stylists statewide were looking for advice on how to survive the shutdown, how to apply for unemployment. The money coming in stopped for about seven weeks, but the bill sure didn't. You know, I was still required to pay my overhead my rent and utilities. Some stylists say their unemployment payments are trickling in now and the amount does vary by person. The rules however for opening up are the same statewide. Between each client we had to uh, mark out time so that we could disinfect. So we have to wipe down everything. We have to sterilize our utensils, all brushes, all combs. You know I have to change my cape, gloves. I'm wearing a mask. I'm also wearing protective eyewear. You don't have to wear the protective eyewear. That's just something I'm choosing to do. I, I don't blame you for being... Hubbard feels like she's picked up a new job during the shutdown. And when she's not seeing clients looking forward, her administrative work on the page will continue. She's becoming an increasingly powerful voice that she plans to use to educate and advocate together. I want people to unite, and that's what we've done on here. We're sharing so much. And it's, it's just unbelievable what it's doing for our industry. I'm ah. excited. And so there they are opening up today. And lots of big smiles today, even under their masks. And thanks to the viewers who shared their images, their new do images today, posting for us on Facebook. You know, the before and afters can be pretty dramatic here. But uh, here's Jamie going in and getting her hair done. And, you know, you do have to have an appointment. So keep that in mind. Places like Great Clips, they had waits up to three hours on the app today. And so if you went to their site, it would say, if you want to check online, our system's overwhelmed, so just walk in. Keep in mind the state guidelines do require appointments. So if you're going to a facility like that, you know, there were some that had 180 minute waits and there were others, maybe it's not the great clips you go to, but something like that, that had just a one minute wait. So maybe just to stay within the guidelines, make sure that you're checking in online and get an appointment. Back to you, Scott.